Hot 97, DJ Drewski, our special guest. Uh, we'll say it like we didn't say it before, but the number one song in the Netherlands. Where else? Um, Saudi Arabia. In fact, all the Arabic countries. Um, Paris. Um, Amsterdam. Uh, plenty more. Going crazy Asia. right now. Yeah. Rema's yeah. in the building. Yeah, yeah. Um, the feature with Selena Gomez, who we mentioned, you, you told me, yo, her fans are different. Mm -hmm. And when you when you say different, what do you mean by different? Um, the support is different. It's huge. You know, like they move like a full on army and it's crazy. And they move in speed and the passion is just different. Like, um, I, I just, I, I can feel the impact. You feel me? And when I say they're different, it's not just towards her. It's also towards everyone that right. she has worked with. Like, you can literally feel the impact. And I'm and, sure it's, it's a good difference, too, for you as an artist. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, I got a lot more work to do. Like, these fans is different type of fans. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I feel like they, you know, I, I, they don't, it don't seem like it's a, it's a new thing. I feel like they've literally grown with her. Like, all... In the, in the different trajectories of our career and our phases as an artist right. and an actor as well. So, yeah. When you work with someone like Selena, who's been doing it for a long time, right? Since a kid, from yeah. television to music. Is it strictly, yo, we just working on Calm Down? Or do you ask, like, some advice or do you take advice, like, on different ways to move in the industry? You know, the, the times where we have convos you know i just I ask a lot and she also asks also about africa she wants to know more right and yeah i also want to know more not just about like the industry but also just know more about you know you know um moving in these zones in these territories as mm -hmm. well like you know knowing about the people and also i also ask about food because i want to be <laughs> in a safe safe place you feel me like, what's the best thing to try out here as well right but yeah, um, we always have great combos and we just touch on different topics. Do you have a favorite food? Especially that like you come to New York, right? It's known for pizza. Have you had a slice of New York pizza yet? Uh, I've not had New York pizza, but I'll, I'll try it. Definitely. Okay, so after the show tomorrow, mm. we got to get you a slice of like real New York pizza. I bet, I bet, I bet. Let's do it. Because there's always a debate which spots got the better pizza, this and that. But we'll, we'll take you to the right spot. Okay, I'm done. Why not? The last show in New York was a different type of vibe, too. Because for people that haven't seen your shows, it's a lot of energy going on in there. Yeah. Right? Even, like, today, I thought maybe you were going to come up here with your shirt off. <laughs> I'm glad you have your hoodie on. I know it's a little cool outside, yeah, but cool. you got your shirt on today. But in those shows, it's a different type of energy. It's a rave, literally. Um, you know, a lot of Afrobeat artists, they do have their events, and they do have, you know, different energy of you know right in included in their songs but like mine and the way i've always been moving i've mm. always pushed the agenda of rave rave it's a rave it's a rave it's a place where you can set loose you mm -hmm. feel me it's a place where <laughs> you feel free as long as we're in this building we're all equal and we can literally do whatever we want you feel me so that's like that's kind of like the agenda towards vibe into the song mm -hmm. you feel me because like when i dropped my first ep i felt like people were too calculative based off the based of the groomings that the generation before us have put them on right so they felt really stuck up you feel me so literally stiff yeah they forget yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah 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 they felt really stiff <laughs> you feel me even when you know artists get on stage it's, you know, it's sometimes it's like like literally i've been i've been watching i've been studying mm -hmm. way before I, I came into the to the industry big time you know the way like the fan movement how they mm -hmm. react to certain things and and I, i'm just i'm here because i want to also change a lot of things and also the way fans vibe to the music in the shows how they listen right you know I feel like the sound is different, so the way they vibe to it should be different. Right, and yeah. and would you say you created the whole Afro rave, you know, that, that whole wave of what's going on? That Would so, you take credit for that? Yeah, I would take credit for that, but there's no Afro rave without Afro beats. You mm. feel me? Afro beats is the, is, the, is the mother tree. 
You feel me? In a jungle, there's always a mother tree. A, a, a tree that its roots is connected to every other tree. The right. stems and the fungi and everything. Um, that's kind of like what Afro rave is all about. And, you know, it's 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 my own perception of Afro beats. It's how I perceive it. It's how right. I refine it to the rest of the world. And I'm glad people are consuming it. When you bring something new, like that type of energy, yeah. in the beginning, sometimes the people that created the tree can sometimes hate, you know what I'm saying? They're not used to it. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like that in the beginning before they understood what it was? Did they look at you like, what is he trying to do? Why is he trying to do something different? Yeah, I, I, I kind of sensed it, but I would say it wasn't really vocal because of how crazy I was moving and how fast I was moving. Right. It was obvious I was doing something different, but it was it was more obvious from other people's fan base, not my fan base. Right. You know, it was quite, it was like, well, are you trying to like create an opposite of Afrobeat? Are you, are you trying to create a conflict in here? Mm -hmm. But it was like, nah, um, I actually took a long while before I actually gave it a name just because of the criticism I went through, you know, the lashes, the back lashes I went through when I dropped my first EP. I was called names, I was laughed at, you know, until the rest of the world started rocking with it. Of course. You know, when the rest of the world started rocking with it, it was like, bet, I'll be, I, I, I would fully go in for the for the people who rock with it. Right. Then, you know, it just became, it started growing and all that young Nigerian youth started understanding what mm -hmm. this is all about and people just started believing in it. And when I knew I had enough believers, I had to give it a, give it a name. And that Apple. was it. Uh, that was it for me. Afro rave. But I didn't, I didn't, even when I was, even when I made that tweet for the first time, I didn't in any way discredit Afro before. Yeah, I, I never yeah. think you ever would try that, right? Because yeah, you no. come from that tree. Literally. Shout to D Prince who yeah. like put, you know, his arm yeah. around you early yeah. on. But it comes, you know, it comes with it when you're creating something new. But do you feel now you see a lot of the young new artists doing what you do? Um, I would say when you when you're doing something different or when you're doing something special, it's a must. Your your influence mm -hmm. is a must. You feel me? Um, but I'm I'm not in any way. I don't in any way want to come for anybody because I'm actually happy. That shows that I'm making influence. Right. When people want to look like me, when people want to sound like me, when mm -hmm. people want to move like me. I'm actually grateful for it. I, I'm not like, hey, yo, you copied my style. Nah. Right. I'm actually grateful for it, like being an influence. Whether or not they whether or not they agree to it is obvious. Like people can tell because I stood by it when no one was doing it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, yeah. yeah, but people, like you said, the closest to you or that felt like they knew you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's not even who he is. He's a church kid. He's a <laughs> religious kid. He don't get crazy like that. This is an act. But you, you've you been able just to break through and s superstar, you know what I'm saying? So there's nothing at this point they can say but just salute you. And um, you being super humble sometimes could come off like, you know, like you don't care. But I'm sure yeah. inside you like, oh, look what I created. Like mm -hmm. respect my, yeah, respect my respect hustle. My, yeah, literally. Because I know it's not a lot of things people see in social media, but... I went through a lot, like just finding myself, or right. finding how I can differentiate myself when it comes to this Afro movement, because I never used to do Afro B. I, I only knew how to rap. I only <laughs> do the trap stuff until right, the right. prince was like, "Yo, you gotta try this," and then I just went went for it. But I kept asking the prince, like, "Yo, the prince, you know, you know, everyone is doing this Afro B thing in Nigeria. Like, how will I separate ourselves? Separate ourselves? Like, that's up to you. You have to." It has to be your perception. That's why we all have different voices, different minds. Mm -hmm. So however your mind articulates Afrobeat is how you go towards it. Also, shout out to my producer, um, um, my engineer at the time as well, um, All Teams. You know, there were a lot. I'd made a lot of songs, a lot of right, songs right, that right. people would not hear, and until I started making the likes of Iron Man, do maybe mm -hmm. it was. Uh, I just had to keep you know strengthening my muscles. I had to keep like strengthening my mind and just like going going for it and just being free right and, and outside of the music just your creative process will separate you from other artists too to mm -hmm. do that on your own to come up with because i'm sure you're you're very in tune with what you got going on you don't let 
other people decide whether, mm-hmm. whether it's visuals or your live show it's like I, I don't know I but I'll get the feeling that you are fully involved in that yeah like literally even picking what I drop mm. uh, I, I don't I know there's a lot of artists that, that you know he has to go through a board or like right right uh, A&R or the yeah. producer yeah I, my team is part of what I do but like when it comes to picking a song it's me like I have to like there are a lot of times I've Five days to the release of a different song, I just be like, I don't want to drop it anymore. I right. want to drop this one. Oh, that could drive people crazy, though. Yeah, yeah. It, Shout it, out to the labels, too, now, because you on label. So that could drive people that crazy. Happened to, that happened to my team, like, Soundgasm, when I was about to drop Soundgasm. <laughs> um, I was about to shoot a music video for a song. I was I was supposed to drop the song on that Friday. Right. And I was like, I just made a phone call. I was like, something just hit me. I feel like, nah, let's let's. let's I ain't drop feeling this one. it. Yeah. And I dropped Songasm, and Songasm is doing his thing, and it went crazy. But, um, yeah, I I supervise a lot when it comes to the arts, the, the branding, you know, the stage direction, everything. I want to be part of everything because mm-hmm. I feel like um, I feel complete that way. If you know. Right. Yeah. I feel complete. Fulfilled. Like, Fulfilled. Yo, and if something goes wrong, it's on me. If it goes right, it's on me. Exactly. Take both sides, like yeah. credit for both sides. Yeah, I just, I just, sometimes I just feel really weird when I just have ideas that I cannot put out. Yeah, I feel really <laughs> right, right, right. stuffy. And stuff. <laughs> well, right, like today, do you feel any stuffiness? Oh, no, I'm chilled. You're good. Mm-hmm. You feel like everything's going smooth. Smooth, very You're smooth. You're running around New York, you got big show tomorrow. The last show, Madonna was in the building. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How does like how does that happen? How does Madonna pull up to one of your shows? Um, I first were in contact, you know, before the show. We're actually in contact. I've been in contact with Madonna for like eight months, I think. Mm. So we just we just been connecting, and she been telling me how much she she rocks with my sound. And you know, Madonna is a queen. I, yeah, of course. I've been hearing her stuff since like forever. But um, she told me she was gonna pull up to the show, and. I was excited. I let my team know. Like, I was like, if right. she pulls up, like, <laughs> yo, give her like a special the seat. VIP I want to I wanna, I wanna see how well I perform. And she actually pulled up. And that was very special for me. And meeting her and shower, she showering me so much praises that that literally like motivated me. Right. Like, pushed me to just keep going hard. Is there any like music talk with her or? Um, it's just straight f- friendship. See, like a lot of times, most of the time when it comes to my, the way I connect with artists, most of the times it's friendship first. Like we just right, right, right. like. Connect. So there hasn't been, because I'm sure the producer, I'm sure like London's like, yo, we got to get a record with yeah, Madonna. We, like, she's not s- said anything about that. Even me, like. Right, like, right. Even me and Selena as well, like just connect first. And then, yeah, then we go into the music or any other discussion. But that's that's what it's like. That's what it's always been like. Yeah. Even having a discussion with Veggie, when Veggie hit me up, like, yo, I rock with what you're doing. You're really different. Mm-hmm. So rest in peace. Well, yeah, we're just talking. We're not, like, yeah, trying yeah, to collaborate. Not... Or we just kept talking. Like, every week, like, yo, what's up? What are you working on? And that's, that's it. Besides Madonna popping out, has there been any other moments where you were like, wow, like this person knows who I am. This person listens to my music or, that's, but not just artists. It could have been anyone. Just like a few weeks ago when Kendrick Lamar followed me, like he follows like 60 something. Right, people. right. And you're one of the 63 like, like, people he followed. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> different. I was like, what? Like, like I, sh- I screenshot, I said to all my friends, like, yo, it's crazy. Like Kendrick is listening to me. So, I gotta be careful what I put out. <laughs> but now, yeah. You got the eyes on you now. <laughs> but you know, you deserve everything because f- your energy is great. Thank you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sure all them blessings you were praying for as a young boy are now, you know, coming coming true. I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to people like you as well. Mm-hmm. Because it's not just about playing the music, it's also about like being part of the journey, being part of the story right. that I'm gonna tell in the next one year, two years, three years, five years, you know, um being one of the first interviews I'm doing out here in New York. And, right. You know, this is recorded, it's gonna be part of history. Yeah. Forever. And, yeah, yeah. We're locked in forever. Yeah, yeah. I'm grateful for that. <laughs> I'm super grateful. Thank you, not just for me, but for pushing the culture. 
This yeah, means sure. a lot to the culture. This means this is literally our dream. You know, seeing these places, watching New York City um, in movies, and now seeing our song being played in video games, movies, in the streets, and right. taxis, and Ubers. You know, we owe you that credit, and we're grateful. We're grateful. Just keep making great records and being a great person. Thank you. And I'm sure, you know, everyone is going to love to support mm -hmm. you on your journey. And I know the music is just the stepping stone to what you really want to do in life. I'm sure you have, you know, ideas to do with the blessings from the music. Mm -hmm. Is there other things you want to do? Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, I just really want to support the youths mostly. Mm -hmm. I feel like there are a lot of creative youths and a lot of creative minds like mine. Right. I might not be super inclined towards the music, but in other aspects, I've met a lot of strong minds that are really passionate. And I feel like what they have in their head is literally what the world needs right now. Um, I'm fully going to go into like supporting the youths um, right. mostly. Um, like opening up of studios? Yeah, for people? opening up creative okay. studios for like for the youths to like, you know, evolve and develop and whatever assistance they might need. You know, me being... I, I just be like a tool to connect them to whatever they would need to to get their ideas out there. Right. Also, clothes, merch, um, arts, comics. You know, I'm super inclined in, towards that aspect. And yeah, more ideas will come as of course yeah, as yeah. we move forward. But there's no denial. As a young artist, it's very important to invest mm -hmm. your money, and I've been doing that for a long while. <laughs> but we're super proud of you. Um, we're excited for the show again, the uh, the next show in New York tomorrow. Do you prepare for that, or is it like yo? I just did it last week, so I'm good. Um, I, you know, knowing that I, I this is the first time I've done a city twice back to back, mm -hmm. I'll surely switch it up. So whoever I've experienced the first one, experienced the first one for what it was. Right. The second one is surely going to be different. You heard them. Yeah. So make sure you pull up. We appreciate you, you know, Thank taking you. time out to come rock with us. I'm grateful. And we need a we need calm down, number one in the States now too. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. DJ Drewski, hot ninety seven. Peace. Peace.